Opening the KPMG Gaming Summit, the Minister for Digital and Financial Services paid tribute to the resilience and professionalism of the sector on the rock. Despite Brexit and Covid, Albert Isola said the number of people employed in the sector has barely changed since 2016, when the number was 3,500 compared to 3,400 today. He said work is ongoing to ensure frontier fluidity, but said Gibraltar is nevertheless prepared for a no-deal scenario. On the new gaming legislation, the minister announced that this will be published shortly and will modernise Gibraltar's remote gambling hub in an ever-changing world, ensuring that the rock remains a tier one jurisdiction for the industry. Meanwhile, regulator Andrew Lyman took the audience through some of the key objectives of the new framework. Speaking to GBC afterwards, he highlighted the new investigative powers and sanctions that will be included in the new legislation. I mean, I think it's important that uh, Gibraltar keeps up with best regulatory practice. So it's going to establish exacting standards for operators on social responsibility, anti-money laundering. It'll define what needs to be licensed and what doesn't need to be licensed. At the moment, we've got lots of what I would call legitimate unlicensed activity in Gibraltar, and, and that's brought with it within the net. Uh, and it gives the regulator and the licensing authority a sort of graduated series of powers, but it balances that uh, with rights of appeal. So, um, I mean, I, I, I mentioned earlier that there'll be a, a, a gambling appeals tribunal. On frontier fluidity, he said that this is the most important factor facing the sector, particularly because of the high cost of housing on the rock. Nevertheless, the regulator said he was optimistic about the future. I mean, I think uh, obviously at this stage we don't know exactly what the nature of the agreement is. I'm optimistic that border fluidity will sustain, but the better the deal, uh, the more confidence there will be in the industry, I mean, the, the challenge for the industry is like anybody in Gibraltar really is property prices and accommodation. So, uh, you know, if you're a mid-ranking or junior employee uh, in the gaming industry, then you're more likely to live in Spain than you are in Gibraltar. And I, I would estimate that probably 75% of uh, gaming employees actually migrate into Gibraltar every day. So I think border fluidity is an extremely important issue. And, and, it, and obviously if the deal goes beyond fluidity into some sort of area of Schengen, then I, I think that will really increase confidence in, in, in the jurisdiction and, and make it a jurisdiction of continued choice. Yeah, I mean, the nature of gambling has changed, as I uh, identified earlier. This was a place of supply jurisdiction. Things have changed now. Um, a lot of other jurisdictions are opening up, uh, and, and the, our operators here want licenses there. But there's no reason why a lot of the back office functions can't be run from here. Uh, I mean, this is a sort of you know, centre of intellectual property as far as, as gambling is concerned. There's lots of expertise here. And obviously, we've lost EU business, but now operators are obviously a are looking at the UK and continued access to the a UK, which has been guaranteed, but also looking at emerging markets. So um, we are saying that we've got risk appetite for emerging market business. So I would expect operators to be able to grow their businesses from Gibraltar. So I'm, I'm quite optimistic about the future. A fireside chat with former Chief Minister Sir Peter Caruana followed. He said the industry has galloped ahead and the challenge now is to remain a friendly and safe, attractive but selective jurisdiction. The delayed 10th Gaming eSummit saw speakers from Isolas, Hassans, Jib Telecom and KPMG, amongst others, in a clear sign that Gibraltar is moving on from the pandemic and looking forward towards a re-energised and modern 21st century gaming sector.